Today we are starting part two of lesson eight and one. The definition of factorial is if n is a positive integer, then n factorial is defined as one times two times three times four until you reach n, right? Times times five, six, seven, eight, n minus one to n. Okay. Now, um, as a special case, just a note, zero factorial is assigned as zero factorial equals one. Um, this is because factorial came about as ways to rearrange objects, and there is one way to rearrange zero objects. It's just nothing. Right? So that's part of it. Now, secondly, um, typically, even though this definition is written that way, more often than not, we'll go backwards. Right? If they tell us 5 factorial, for example, I will do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? Basically, a countdown method is how I will show it. Um, which would equal the same thing. We're just organizing it a different way. For example, solve 4 factorial. Well, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 12 times 2 gives us 24. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1, right? But we already just found 4 factorial. So I wrote it as 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. Well, 4 factorial is 24. 6 times 5 is 30, and 30 days is about 720 hours. Next, 12, we've got 9 factorial over 3 factorial, 5 factorial. Now, 9 factorial would be, you know, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times so on until we get to 1. But how I'm going to write it is until we hit 5, because if I keep going from there, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that is actually 5 factorial. So we could rewrite 9 factorial as 9 times 8 factorial or 9 times 8 times 7 factorial and so on. Sorry, it looks a little sloppy there. But in that case, we're going to rewrite it as 9 through 6, right? 9, 7, 8, 7, 6, and we're going to stop at 5 because 5 factorial will cancel with 5 factorial here, right? And 3 factorial I did write out as 3 times 2 times 1. Well, these will now cancel. We'll get out the red marker here, and 5 factorial cancels with 5 factorial. And then what else do I have? 3 can cancel here or here, right? 3 and 2 would cancel out with 6. 3 divided by 3, I get 2, and then I have a match of 2 on both top and bottom. And so this would leave me with 9 times 8 times 7, or computing it out, 504. Next, what if they gave us variables here? <clears throat> n factorial over n minus 3 factorial. Because they're using variables, letters, this will take a little more thinking, right? Which one is a larger value? Now, if you're not sure, pick a number greater than 3. How about 7? Seven? 7 factorial over 7 minus 3, or 4 factorial. Top number is bigger, right? Because how we would rewrite n factorial, right, as a reminder, would be n times, and then we're going to subtract 1, right, like we did over here. 9 minus 1 is 8, right? But now that we're variable, so this would be n minus 1. And then now 7, n minus 2, 6, n minus 3. So we're just going to keep writing it. Well, how do you know when you're finished? Well, we want to just match the bottom, right? Because this would go eventually till 3 times 2 times 1. Or n could be even less than that, right? But since we're using... Um, Again, kind of variables here. We're just going to go to this point and then call it factorial. So I'm going to rewrite it as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 factorial. Well, why did I stop there? Same reason I stopped at 5 for my 9 factorial. It's going to match on the bottom, and then we can just direct cancel here. These cancel here, and I'm left with this. Um, and that's fine to leave that as an answer. Generally, yeah, we can multiply it, but this would be the same as telling me 9 times 8 times 7. Since they're all variables, we're just going to leave it like that. Um, clearly, 9 times 8 times 7, we can calculate. Moving on. Definition of summation notation, which is also known as sigma notation. Okay, so we can write the first n terms of a sequence using sigma notation, right? So this would be an example of saying from the terms 1 to n of this function, a sub 1, that'll give us equals the first term plus the second term plus the third term until we hit n, right? Just dot, 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 plus the n term. Now, they like to call i as the index of summation. 
Um, N is the upper limit, one is the lower limit, is what they refer to those. Um, however, we don't use this, I don't use that terminology much, I'll be saying that. So just some properties of, we have a summation of one to N of C, right? So this would be like, we've got one to 10 of term three. Well, then you're just gonna say, okay, we've got how many terms? We've got N times that number. Now, most of the time we'll have variables involved. So for example, over here, this would be like, um, a sub i would be like a function, right? So if we have one to n of c times a sub um, a sub i, we would move that c out and we just say c times, and then we could simplify this to just being one to n of this, and then multiply by c in the n. Just a reminder, c is used as a constant. Next, if we've got two pieces added to each other from terms one to n, we can separate that terms 1 to n for a sub i plus 1 to n of b sub i and then add those together. Same thing with subtraction. Um, we don't use 3 and 4 often. We may use 2 um, here and there. 1 is not often used either in our at uh, honors pre-calc level. So 14, the terms 1 through 5 of 4i. Well we could take out the 4 and put it in front and that would be 4 times 1 through 5 of i. Well, what does that look like? That would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Add those together. 1 through 4 add equal 10 from bowling, right? Plus 5, we got 15. 15 times 4 is 60, right? So, Or we could have done 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4. 4 times 5, our fifth term. And then just add these. 12, 24, um, 40, 60, right? But you could also rewrite it as 4 times 15 equals 60. And this would have been what we did there mathematically, right? We just times 1, times 2, times 3, and simplify. Next, we can't pull a value out here. This is kind of like an mx plus b, 3n plus 4. But a little note here, we're not doing 1 through 7. This is we start at term 3 and then go to 7. So 3 times 3 plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. 3 times 4 plus 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. 3 times 5, 15 plus 4, 19. And you'll notice because it's an mx plus b, m being the slope is what we're jumping by. So I would guess we get 22 and 25, 18 plus 4, 21 plus, my 4 got erased, sorry. And that does match, right? So then the answer is not just these written out, but we're going to add them together. So we got 29, um, 48, 50, 70, and then 95 is what I get when I add those all together. Moving on. Use sigma notation to write the sum. So to write the sum, right, you got to count. How many terms do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six terms. So I would say sigma one to six, but now we got to find a way to write this. So again, we've got six terms here. And looking at the pattern of the terms, now that we know we're 1 through 6, right? We're divided by 3, divided by 3, divided by 3. But there's not really a nice way to say, you know, n divided by 3. But we could say times 1 third. So we're going to say 1 third. And how many times do we multiply by 1 third, right? This is 1 third to the 1. No, this one's 1 third to the 0. This is 1 third to the 1 squared, cubed, and so on. But again, think about that. That was to the one. I'm one less. So at this point, I'm thinking negative one third to the n minus one, right? Because we're dividing by negative three, which you could say is times negative one third. Um, six terms, one to six, so you can write it this way. Now, some people prefer to write it without the minus one. And so how they would do that is they would go one term further, right? Just like we did with the adding one, where you, if we're going the other way, times three, times negative three, times negative 3, and we'd be at negative 3. So you could say negative 3 times negative 1 third to the n. I personally prefer this way. Um, there may be other reasons you would want it this other way, but um, this is typically the way I'm going to do it on my answer keys. Definition of a series. Consider the infinite sequence a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3 to a sub i, and so on. The sum of the first n series uh, terms of the sequence is called a finite series or partial sum, right? The sum of all the terms is called 
of an infinite sequence is called an infinite series. So now instead of saying like what we were doing before, it was like this term, comma, next term, comma, next term, typically, besides that last problem. Um, so this, then when we separate them by plus or minus sign, becomes a series. So that's the difference where sequence might be the pattern 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, where it would be a plus 2. But if we said 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, all of a sudden that became a series, right? If I continue it, plus whatever dot, dot, dot would be infinite. If I just stopped it at, a, say, 13, um, that would be a finite series. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to find partial sum. What this means is they're going to give us a term that goes to inf um, infinitely, but we're only going to find the first n terms, in this case, the first four. So first off, I'm going to plug in 1. 1 over 1 factorial, 1 over 1 is 1. That's the first term. Second term, 1 over 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so it's 1 over 2 or 1 half. Next, the third term, 1 over 3 is 3 times 2 is 6, right? Because we already have 2 factorial, so we're just multiplying one more number here. So 3 times 2 is 6, and we got 1 6. Fourth term, 4 times 6 is 24, so 1 over 4 factorial is 1 24th. And now, these are, we can't just write these as 1 plus this, we're just going to add them together. Now, for simplicity purpose, I just would prefer that these are all in 24th. So we've got 24 24th here, this is going to be 12 24th. This is going to be 4 24, so 24 plus 12, 36, plus 4, 40, plus 1, 41, 24 is my final answer. Next one is from 1 to infinity of 3 times 1 fifth to the i for the third partial sum. So 3 times 1 fifth to the 1 is 3 fifth. 3 times 1 fifth squared, this is now going to be 1 25th, would be 3 25th. So basically, we're just increasing the denominator by a multiple of 5. So times it by 5 one more time, we get 3 1 25th, and now turning these into 1 25th, times by 25 up here, and we get 75 times by 5 over here, and we get 15, and now adding the numerators. 75 plus 15 is 90, plus 3, we get 93 1 25th as our third partial sum of that series. And that concludes the lesson for today. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions on the lesson or certain problems get you stuck. Thanks.